So this upload is going to be up for you guys at a very funny time. I'm not the most consistent in recent days. Uh, unfortunately, I've been unwell this week. But what would make me feel a lot better is if more of you guys were to join our private group, the Atrium of Scent, which is our private community where you get to know other people who love fragrances and get to trust them before you buy secondhand fragrances from them, no matter where you are around the world. So we have a Discord server, you join it, you pay $3 a month and all that money goes to a monthly budget, which becomes a monthly giveaway. The, the one lucky winner can buy any fragrance of that budget. So we've had people win Aventus Cologne, uh, Killian's Black Phantom, Baccarat Rouge as well was the most recent winner. So yeah, guys, make sure to join our private group. It's a great community. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I'll see you guys there. In this channel recently, we are promoting always quality over quantity. That is one mistake I wish I could redo in my own fragrance journey is to have less fragrances and just have fewer and higher quality stuff. But when we say we want quality, we don't know which brands to look at for that. So this video is gonna give you 10 different brands which I think you should look into, which I think are currently at the top of the game at this point in time. A lot of them are gonna be niche brands, but I'm gonna tell you which fragrances I think you should try out in each uh, brand, so it gives you a good starting point. Just some of these are really definitely my favorites. I definitely recommend you check these out. Number one is Zergeoff. This is a fantastic niche brand. Most niche brands have a lot of fragrances that are very expensive, have that niche price tag, but it's not worth the money. Zergeoff changes that. You know you're gonna get quality with this Italian brand. They do both sweet orientals really well, as well as fresh summer fragrances also to match that Italian Mediterranean lifestyle. Fragrances like Zergeoff's Naxos, a classic. If you wanna to go to Oriental, go for that as your first beginner fragrance in this brand. Alexandria too, one of the best oud fragrances ever created. You got Zergeoff Zafiro, nice amber fragrance I'm wearing currently as well. In the summer uh, niche category, we have the uh, Zergeoff's Uden, fantastic fragrance, Zergeoff's Neo, Zergeoff 40 Knots, which is one of my most recent favorite fragrances, which is incredible. It's going for a really cheap price and all beauty, I believe. That is a very unique summer fragrance. It goes to show you how fragrances can be elevated in a niche brand. So definitely check out Zergeoff. In the designer realm, Chanel. Now they are very consistent. The more fragrances I keep buying for them, the more I realize that just, they just don't miss actually. <laughs> Chanel are so consistent. They don't release much, that's their main downfall. They, they're not really releasing anything new now. They need to innovate, I think. They need to, you know, you don't want to stagnate as a brand in general, but they do have a good legacy to fall back onto. They have their name. So things like Blue de Chanel is extremely versatile. The Allure line is very versatile, more so for warm weather. Then we have uh, fragrances like Antaeus and Masterpiece Animalic Fragrance. The even like Egoist, Platinum Egoist, fantastic office fragrances. Their private line is full of masterpieces like Coromandel, Le Lyon. These, it, 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 they just don't miss. And so their, their private line is what they're focusing on the most now. Some of the fragrances in the private line is a bit feminine. Uh, like Sycamore, I don't like that fragrance. I think it smells a bit too old school, like an older woman would wear that. So be careful, but most of the time, yeah, Chanel is, is just super on point. They are definitely an S tier brand, one of the best in the game, especially if you want elegance in your fragrances. Then we have Giorgio Armani, who are a little bit more affordable to Chanel, and they are also very consistent. They are a more mainstream friendly, more mature brand, I would say. It's more for an elegant man. I think they do really well. Aqua Di Gio, the new Eau de Parfum, fantastic. Really keeps the uh, the classic DNA of that line modern and fresh. No pun intended. <laughs> they have Armani Code. The Armani Code Eau de Parfum keeps the original fresh and relevant. Armani Code <laughs> Absolute, fantastic loud sweet fragrance. If you want compliments, Code Profumo, fantastic sweet date night fragrance, again, attention grabber, especially in the clubs as well, it works really well. So these fragrances are really good, and all the older fragrances now that are discontinued, like Armani, Armani Eau de Cidre is gone now, I believe. I think Eau de Nuit was a very good fragrance, also gone, but they're very consistent, basically is what I'm trying to say. They very rarely miss. Um, and if you guys know some fragrances from either of these, any of these brands I've discussed so far that you think are misses, 
uh, let us know in the comments down below. But I think, you know, most people will agree with me. These are premium brands. Parfum de Mali. Now, this is one of the best niche brands to get into as someone who's getting into niche fragrances in general. If you're a beginner in niche fragrances. Now, Parfum de Mali, I think their strength is in oriental fragrances, sweet, spicy orientals. They do have some good summer fragrances, Sedley, Greenly, and Percival, for example, as well as Darley. Now, these fragrances are nice and they're long lasting. So if you're paying a big price tag, um, I think their orientals are more worth the money than their summer fragrances, uh, really. Even though fragrances like Percival uh, give me 12 hours performance in the summertime, which is impressive. And it gives me one of the most, comp you know, it's one of my most complimented fragrances in general. However, I do still think their strength is an oriental. So they have masterpieces like Leighton, Herod, Leighton Exclusive, Carlisle, Pegasus. I even like their most polarizing fragrance, Calan, you know, which I still have a almost full bottle of. So I think if you want to get into sweet, dense oriental fragrances, apart from the Wanli is the one to go for. I think Initio is also another good brand to go for, but I'm still getting into them. I still need to try more of their stuff. Zaharoff fragrances. Now he is a you know, great guy, George, who've made this brand. He has promoted himself really well um, online through social media and through other influencers. And I think the brand is very good from what I've tried. I've tried two fragrances, the Har of Port Om and the Siren. And the what I've heard from about his other creations is, you know, generally people are raving about about these fragrances in general. Like Tabac has a lot of good reviews also. A lot of people have been saying they've really enjoyed this fragrance. I've not really seen anyone say that they don't. Tabac from Zaharoff, stunner. So it seems like Zaharoff is very consistent. I'm giving Zaharoff a shout out because it's always good to support independent niche brands that are mainly online. So Zaharoff, you know, has a lot of passion behind it. I can tell George does some great work. And, you know, the more opportunities we can get his fragrances in the UK, the better. I'm definitely keen to try out his other stuff. And you get into Zaharoff if you like Middle Eastern style of perfumery mixed with the Western style. I feel like that's what George is going for. It makes some very good sense. A lot of them revolve around oud, but they're generally gonna be, you know, oriental sweeter fragrances that have interesting complex notes like myrrh, spices, incense, and oud. Maison Francis Kurjan. It's just, Francis Kurjan is a master perfumer. He made Le Mal when he was 25, which is one of the best selling fragrances in the world. He is just, if you want to just try out really great perfumery, again, really high quality stuff that you, maybe I feel like MFK is probably like the second or third brand you get into if you're getting into niche fragrances. So, you know, obviously Baccarat Rouge. I think, you know, it's a simple fragrance. It might be a little bit overpriced, but it's still a masterpiece. It was revolutionary when it was made. It gets, it takes a sweet sugary gourmand and beasts it out with modern day Ambroxan to make it really mass appealing. You got fragrances like Grand Soir, one of the best amber fragrances ever made. You have uh, Masculine Pluriel, a modern day barbershop fragrance that modernizes a classic DNA. You have fragrances like Amaris Port Homme, which is a very unique, beautiful, underrated signature. If you want to stand out with your signature daily fragrance, you go for that. As well as many other fragrances in his collection, I feel like he's just a very consistent creator and he's very artistic. If you want true true beauty in the sense you are smelling each day, get some get like a big range of samples from him. It's really, really good stuff. Okay, Lalique. Now we have to talk about them. They give you far higher value than the price you are paying. The quality is insane. I don't know how they do it. I used to only, you know, smell their, their Encre Noir line, the original, the uh, Alex Strem, which is one of my favorite cheap fragrances of all time. I give that a 10 out of 10, by the way. And then also uh, Encre Noir Sport, which is a fantastic, unique, unique summer fragrance. All smell much higher quality than the price you're paying. They are creative, they're long lasting, really incredible stuff. It feels like a steal. And then recently I acquired La Lique Pour Homme Equius, which is sort of like a green barbershop fragrance modernized for people who love Dunhill Icon or Terre d'Hermes, they will love this fragrance. And I'm just starting to realize this brand in general is just fantastic. Other fragrances from them, like like Leek Lion Eau de Parfum is also highly rated. I feel like if you're on a budget and you want higher quality than the price you are paying, La Leek is what you need to go for. Aaron Terrence Hughes, again, supporting online independent perfumery. Aaron is a YouTuber. You can go watch his videos and see his passion for perfumery. He, I believe he taught himself over the course of 10 years. You know, he has a chemistry background, but he taught himself perfumery 
over 10 years and you can just see he has a very unique style. Again, being online independent, he gives you fantastic value for money. His, his fragrances, you still have to spend a fair bit of money on them, but you get so many samples that are very affordable. You can try out so much of this stuff really easily. And you can just tell he loves beast mode, <laughs> Middle Eastern inspired, lots of oud in his fragrances, patchouli, darker style of fragrances that is really creative. If you want, if you're tired of the same bland, you know, recycled ideas in the designer market, you go to Aaron's brand. He is very good. Watch some of his videos if you haven't discovered him yet and just appreciate his love for the art. Hermes, now they are very much <laughs> a high quality brand. I don't know what to say about Hermes. They're just very high quality niche perfumery that is generally gonna be more mature and bright as well. Now, I love them for the Terre d'Hermes line. Basically, I love every single flanker from that line. The EDT, the Power Fum, the uh, Owen Tense Vetiver. It's not the most popular, but I still think it's underrated. Very good vetiver fragrance. Uh, Eau Fresh was fantastic as well. Discontinued. I haven't tried the new Eau Givre. Now, I just think, but I, 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 from what I've heard, that's also got fantastic reviews. They are very consistent. I used to own as well Un Jardin Sur Le Nid, which is pretty much in the middle unisex. Very photorealistic orange, but still very long lasting. Very good quality. They do not miss. They have a fantastic name to themselves. Even phrases like H24, which I did not like, was still very high quality. You still appreciate what they're doing. You're not going to get any rubbish from them. Uh, so I think they're definitely worth checking out. Finally, Alexandria Fragrances. Now, this is made by, I think, an Egyptian gentleman called um, Hani Hafez. And he has essentially made a predominantly a clone house. I probably think this is the best clone house out there. Again, fantastic value for money. You can get their creations easily in the USA or in the UK. And you don't have to get a, a large volume of their stuff. They sell a lot of their bottles in 30 mils, which is absolutely fine. Not every fragrance is born equal mill to mill. Some of their, some fragrances are just much stronger. You don't need to spray as much, so they'll actually last you a long time. And they have made some fantastic clones. So um, I, I started off this brand, on this brand with maybe five of the fragrances, and the five I can recommend is Apple Crumbs, which is an original creation by them. It makes it smell like a sexy apple pie. It's very, yeah, very realistic. If you, if you want a proper gourmand fragrance, go for that. Um, Hafez 1984, another original creation. Loud, extremely high quality fragrance for only like $35, something like that, that has a similarity to Red Tobacco by Mancera, but it's their own twist on it, I think. Uh, it's, the, it's the different fragrance overall, but it's, I think it's higher quality. I think it's slept on and it's one of my most complimented fragrances. They have also uh, Zion, which is their clone of Roja Elysium. I think it's, again, it's, it's a, not a perfect clone, it's their own twist, but I actually think I prefer Zion to Elysium and you save hundreds of dollars by going for Zion. 1981X is a fantastic clone of Naxos. It's a bit softer to your skin, but it's a perfect date night fragrance. It's so smooth. So beautiful. If you just want the best honey-based day night fragrance ever, you can go for that. And finally, also, I tried out Royal Equestrian, which is a decent fragrance on itself. It was trying to clone Leighton. I don't think they clone it very well. It's probably 80% similar, maybe, I'd say, but it's it's very good for the price. Again, it's, it's you know it's a Leighton-esque fragrance for a tenth of the price, which is very impressive. All the fragrances are extremely high quality. Again, similar to La Lique, you're getting much higher quality than the price you are paying. You're paying our math prices, but you're getting much higher quality than our math. So do not sleep on Alexandria fragrances. Even if you get their sample packs, they, you, they are something you should check out. Check out those five that I recommend. They are, again, a very highly esteemed brand and they're very highly reviewed. What did you guys think of this video? Are there any brands that you think are just super consistent and are killing the game at the moment? They're at the very top and other people should be aware of because I guess we don't want to waste too much of our time on brands that are going to disappoint us, okay, or are overpriced. That's why I didn't mention brands like Creed in this video or I didn't, I didn't mention uh, brands like Dunhill. You know, they had Dunhill icon, but a lot, most of the fragrances are misses. So, you know, if you understand my frustration, let me know, guys. You know, which, fra which brands do you think miss too much and aren't consistent enough? And which brands do you think are your favorites? and are very consistent and you know deserve the respect that they've gained if you enjoyed this video guys make sure to check out our other videos as well in the meantime and i'll see you in the next one bye